Hello, YouTube family. Uh, Mr. Wikishot back here again with another video. Um, today's video is going to be about a, something a little bit more personal, close to my heart. And my last video, the first one I should see that I put out, you know, I uh, asked you guys to let me know if you wanted me to talk about something else again or anything that you guys had, you know, want to get my thoughts or anything like that. And someone was gracious enough to leave a suggestion and a pretty cool one at that they wanted me to talk about you know how I came to move countries um essentially how I decided to come to America and you know it's a it's a love story more than anything else a true love story but a very um interesting one as well so that's what I'll be talking about today so first off thank you guys for all the love and support in the previous video um Thank you for all the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Touch my heart. Thank you for all the subscribers, even though I, I didn't like think about it or was even thinking about subscribers. My main um idea behind the video was just to like put my feelings out there so that someone that was just like me that might not be aware of what they're being turned into would see it. I just wanted the wanted it to help somebody. And I said to my friend initially when I put I said, even if it helps one person. That's, you know, I'm happy with that. So, you know, I was looking at the subscribers or getting like or anything like that. So everything above that, you know, beyond the first view is um, I'm truly grateful for and thankful for you guys for it. So um, just to get straight into it. So this video will be about me coming to America, how I came about that. So this started off in 2008. That's where the journey began or my road to that um to the current situation began it started in 2008 january where i was currently employed at uh jamaica's version of a walmart we call it price mart in jamaica and um while i was working there and at this point i was in the the tech section you know where you have the tvs and stuff like that and um that kind of stuff so before being in that section i was working as a shelf stocker and then from there, I started working as a cashier. And they, in the midst of me working as a cashier, they figured out that I had a lot of knowledge in terms of in technology and stuff like that, and you know wanted to put me to better use and and support, um, put me in the tech section. So while I was working there, you know the usual days, you know this guy came in, and just like a regular customer, I just you know didn't seem any odd to me. It was just asking the usual questions that customer would ask about you know the items there and you know texts and stuff like that and technology stuff and by the end of the conversation long so short he offered me a job to work as his um you know work as his lead technician um at his computer store at the time called all net computers you know it was my first big break um into you know the it world you know as an actual technician so I was, you know, I was overwhelmed with joy, you know, getting the opportunity. So, yeah, I took it. I said, yeah, you know, I took it, you know, resigned from, you know, that job at Price Mart to go work, you know, for this guy. So um, he gave me my first big break. He took the chance on me. Um, you know, I, I always look up to him and, 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 and I always, whenever I talk to him, you know, I let him know, hey, man, I appreciate, you know, you know, the chance he gave me what he did for me, you know, back then. And you might see him. Like not to anybody else, but to me, you know, I still appreciate it, you know, nonetheless. So, you know, shout out to Mr. P. Um, very good guy, um, very knowledgeable to, back then to me it was like the guru of the technology, some of the stuff he was doing, you know, of the IT world, you know, and see it. Because when I think back now to some of the stuff he was doing and some of the stuff I learned from him, you know, they were like next level, you know, even back then. So um but yeah, so essentially I worked there for quite a bit, you know, and I'm um, on one of those days that you have as a technician, you know, not doing, um, you know, much or a downtime. I usually, you know, you'll find stuff to do, whether it's Google, I would browse the internet, check my Facebook. So one of these days I'm just checking, you know, I'm on my Facebook page and um, I came across this, this, this new thing to Facebook at the time that was called um, Yoville. You know, shout out to anyone from back then that knows Yovil and used to rock with that. So, yeah, it's essentially to me, it was like a sim, a real world version of the sim because, you know, you have your avatar. It, it's not similar to sim, but that's the way I look at it. Like, um, you have an avatar and your avatar can be whatever you want it to be, whoever it wants to look like. 
And I came across this avatar, this Asian avatar, and the name at the time was like Asian Prince or something like that. And, you know, that's where me and my now wife met, you know, and initially that's the first time we met. It was on Yeovil. Yeah, weird as hell, but yeah. So I told you this was going to be interesting. So, yeah, um, that's where we met. We followed each other around for quite a bit. And, yeah, we just kind of, I don't know how long we stayed as Yeovil friends for, but I know eventually we added each other on Facebook. I think that, you know, the same day after we, you know, followed each other around for quite a bit, we decided to just exchange Facebook contact and we spoke on Facebook for quite a bit. And I'll be fast forwarding, fast forwarding through most of this story because this happened over a three to four year span. So I can't tell everything word for word because it would be a three hour video minimum. So, so bear with me. So, yeah. Um, so this kind of, you know, went on, we talked on Facebook for quite a bit. And then after that, we took it to the next level and decided to, you know, talk on Messenger since it offered a little bit better communication option. And that's Yahoo Messenger at the time. And we did like a lot of Messenger stuff and then a lot of, you know, voice uh, Yahoo calls or video chat and stuff like that. And then after doing that for quite a bit, um, we took it to the next level and then decided to ask, exchange personal numbers. So we text back and forth. We call each other back and forth. You know, we would text each other in the morning when we wake up. Um, it got to the point where we would call each other at the end of the day. You know, so we were kind of deep into it. That's the first. By the time we got to the calling and texting part was when I kind of figured, okay, you know, you know, something's probably going on here. Because, you know, you know, and for me, even when it started off, I, I never took anything serious or beyond just like a, pay, you know, almost like a PayPal you know, friend or something like that, because that's what Facebook was about, just kind of bringing people together. So I never took it, you know, look at it, anything beyond that at the time. And especially because I was already secure and comfortable where I was, you know, and I wasn't looking for a relationship either because I was not like a relationship type of guy. You know, I, I didn't, I you know, I, I just didn't have, you know, trust in people, period. It wasn't this girl, I just didn't trust people. So I was never going to put myself in a relationship. And, you know, like I would be in a relationship in the, you know, in the past, but even the past ones, I was never like into it, like emotionally attached. And the reason being is because I know if like something went wrong, like it wouldn't bother me. You know, girl would say, okay, I'm not like, you know, whatever. And I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> you know, it, it wouldn't, it literally wouldn't matter to me because I was never attached to the person, my mind, you know, so it's almost like I saw them as, you know, just, you know, I saw the relationship as just like, uh, just nothing, you know, essentially. So this one, uh, by the time it got to the calling and texting stage and regularly, that's when I, you know, I, I felt like something was weird. Like my heart was a little bit not as cool as it usually is. So, um, yeah, so we did the talk and texting for quite a bit. And then um, one thing led to another. We're, you know, six months, you know, into it. You know, we're on like September by this point of all, um, of all eight, you know, because, you know, I started that, um, uh yeah it started off in january where the journey started in january or or nine so yeah by this point yeah we're roughly six months in and she's like well you know we've been talking for a while now i think you know you know the only thing left the next level is i got to see you you know uh we got to see each other and i'm like well sorry to break it to you but i don't have much interest in leaving the country you know because at that point i just didn't have any known family or relatives overseas that would make me feel like okay i want to you know, go visit this person. All my family, like direct family and friends, was in Jamaica, so I had no interest, and I wasn't. I didn't. I didn't like planes. I was scared of heights, so I never wanted to go near one. And I, I was avoiding it at all costs. So she was like, "Okay, well, if you won't come to me, I'll come to you." And I was like, "Okay, then." You know, um, you know. So she was. She she wasn't joking. You know, she so she made the first trip out. Um, she made the first trip out that year and then um spent like four uh we spent like four days together by that point i still never like mentioned her to anyone like family wise or introduced her to like anyone family wise because to me even by the time she came the first time and it was like the best like feeling ever like seeing her and just let you guys know that first just you know she went through a lot to get to that point of even coming to see me because by that point by the time it got to the serious stage or for her, the, you know, the part where she know we were like men for each other, her parents know of it or, or because she lived with her mom and her three brothers at the time and her dad, so they know of it and they were fully against it. They fought, her dad specifically, father, tooth and nail. There were moments where 
she tried to talk to me on the phone and you know they wouldn't let her talk you wouldn't let her talk on the phone and it would take her phone away and all kind of stuff and moments where she had to run to her car and lock herself in it just to talk to me so it was rough so i'm just kind of skimming through it but this was not no easy long distance relationship it was tough you know so you know she had to you know get her brother to bring her to the airport the first time and did it secretly um and i get the reservation at the time because you know if i was a dad i would be pretty you know against my daughter doing something like that you know because of the obvious reason you know you don't want her getting taken advantage of when the person's overseas so it was like for them you know it didn't make sense and it was like okay you know in their asian culture and in his mindset you know you have to be with someone of asian origin first off that is first choice second have to be you know they eat if they're not asian they have to be white and then last option they have to be in america and at least rich you know because you know they have a god of money so you know having money is important to them so um yeah she didn't care about none of that really because it was just what her heart wanted so she we you know fought for it and i was fighting against you know stuff on mine as well but not create not to the level that she had to put up with so by the time she came to see me i was like man this girl is serious you know so i have to give her respect and the love grew even more and seeing her the first time was like a feeling i never forget and i was so sad at the end of the 40 because we only got 40s you know so because by then she was still kind of working uh, for a dad nail shop um or working as a nail technician you know she didn't own the shop at the time but because it was early on in her in her startup but she that was she was still doing so she didn't have a lot of time to to, to stay overseas so at that point i'm okay all right yep it's on you know and then she came back out again in 09 for valentine's day and by that point i'm like oh shit yeah we, we definitely have something going on here so uh my heart was already filled with love for her and and the the the, the, re the feeling was very strong and i proposed to her on valentine's day and you know it was just you know the one of the most special moments in my life like the only thing that I, that that I keep close with me to that is my first child and my second child. Those are the two most special moments in my life: the proposal, you know, and 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 my child, my two children. So, you know, we got engaged. She spent a week in Jamaica at that point, and then um she went back over, and um by the time she came back the third time, um which was in September '09, we got married. Um, uh, when I proposed to her, that's when I introduced her to my family, my mom and dad and stuff like that, and my closest friends. And then when she came back out the third time, and this time she spent three weeks in September '09. Um, that's when we had her, you know, red wedding at my family home. Um, in 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 the yeah, in Jamaica, and it was awesome. It was a it was a Christian wedding. Um, a very you know blessing one. Family friends passes all that stuff. It was great. Like you know, and um, while we're on our honeymoon, you know, she was like, well, no, you have to come, you know, you, you have no choice, you can't keep running anymore, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, the real, the, the realization hit that, yeah, I can't keep running anymore, like, eventually, now I'm gonna have to make the move, so, um, long story short, she, um, she, by the time she spent two weeks, and she went back over, and, um, I'm now back there, you know, so, we, yeah, so we got married in September 15, 09. So I'm back there, like, just kind of processing in my head all the stuff I'll have to do, you know, but, but at this point, I'm still working at Allnet, um, and I'm like, okay, well, I have to, you know, I'll have to leave my job, I'll have to leave my home, I have to leave my friends and family, I don't know anyone there. I had, like, um, aunt and uncle over there but we didn't have that type of relationship where i was like you know talking to them i didn't even talk to any of them at the time because we just didn't have that kind of relationship so i was like bro you know so i had a lot of anxiety about you know leaving the place i lived for 20 something years to go somewhere else by myself and you know i've seen stories where you know people you know getting stuff like that and they get over there and, and the dude get left hung out to dry or the girl get left hung out to dry and that you know they just never you know, recover from it. So I'm like, ah, yeah, okay, but you know, she made three trips, so I gotta do my part. So over the part, over the course of two years period, from o nine to o eleven, that's you know what all the processing was. You know, getting the migration process done, and you know, liquidating assets and doing everything I need to do, get myself 
psyched up and ready, you know, to, 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 to go over to migrate to another country. And I arrived in the U.S. on 2011, January 2011 to be exact. That's when I arrived. So two years after we got married. And I, once I arrived, it was a different um, welcoming once I arrived and, you know, amongst her dad and mom. Her mom was always okay with it. Her brothers were, for the most part, supportive. Didn't have much issue with it. It was mostly, most her um, opposition came from her dad. But once I got there and they saw me and now they saw what they were working with, they welcomed me in. Once they saw that she was in, because I think initially I was just trying to break her. And once they saw that, wicked, this is my only daughter. And, you know, she's too mentally strong. You have to, that you eventually just going to give in and go with her. So, you know, they backed me, they welcomed me in, they took me in like the only, they treated me like, like a son. And for the most part, for the most of the first three years, I was the one that was keeping my distance from them. Mainly because I just felt hurt, really angry. By the time I got there, I was so angry at her dad for what he did to her and what he put her to. So I was like in defense mode the whole time, but I never like act out or anything like that. It was just in my heart the whole time because I couldn't believe like somebody would put their daughter through some of the stuff he put her through. And like I said, I'm not seeing everything because of the fact that I don't want this thing to be long, but it was tough, man. There was a lot of crying. There was a lot of moments over those two or three years where even after we got married, where we thought we wasn't going to see each other again. Like, you know, after the first trip, sometimes we still thought we wasn't going to see each other again. The third time, you know, so, okay, even when we got married, you know, there was a lot of ups and downs within, you know, the documentation and just, like, stuff that was going on there and where we're like, man, and I'm, like, like panicking, you know, I was stressed out. I was losing weight during that time as well because I'm, like, in my head, I was, like, this is my worst fear, getting your heart tangled up in a relationship and it just falls and then you have to start over again. And I was, like, saying to myself, if this feels, I am not going into a relationship again. Like, I will be uh, a wanderer you know, for the rest of my life, I would, I will always, you know, have girls, but not girlfriend, which is a big difference, because that way I'm never, this thing never happened to me again, so it was tough, man, so I was like, by the time I left and arrived, you know, it was a different story, Um, and I'm like, my mindset was locked in on, on the, 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 the main task, and I, which is take, take, grasp the opportunity with both hands and run with it, you know, knowing that when I got that first job at Allnet, um, I was, that was because of my self-taught IT skills that I had developed over years. I started from a kid and I was like, you know, messing with computer parts, motherboard, processor, memory, hard drive. I was building and software and um, doing all kinds of stuff on computers from an early stage. And I never had internet. I never had phone. My parents never had money to send me to school. So it was literally, I was just learning on the fly. You know, it just felt naturally. So by the time, roll around I get to the US my skills was already pretty good so I knew okay I can't go to college now I'm in a country where I have the opportunity to get fine you know to get help to go to school um I I, I took a loan out or I enrolled within the first two months I got here I enrolled in in the college and start working on my 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 degree for computer and network systems I didn't waste no time you know you got to be right up here you know if you want to succeed you know especially in a foreign land and I wasn't going to waste my opportunity. Every day that I was in America, I treated it like it was my last day. I never in my head felt like, okay, I was set. I was like one of them. I always looked at it as you're a foreigner in a foreign land and you have like an opportunity. And I was like, that's where I thought of it. I'm like, I thought of my parents back home and how hard they were struggling and how much I always wanted to help them and take care of my parents. Because before I came up with, within the last year, I was supporting them, like literally trying to cover the rents and all that stuff and provide security for them because no one else was at the time. So my, my, my main thing was, okay, you know, a lot of the, the, the last two years was praying to God, say, hey, if you, you know, if I get this opportunity, I'm not doing this for myself. I'm going to take care of my family and I'm going to make sure that they're, they're well provided for. And so if you give me the opportunity, that's what I'll do. So that's what I did. I enrolled in college and start working on my computer and, um, computer network system degree and yeah within the first you know I took a loan out on myself you know like the loan was on me you know so I was risking it for the biscuit but I knew that I had the brain to get through those course with no problem and I wasn't wrong you know because my experience like took me through the college I, I graduated 
with honors and the top of my class in almost all the curriculum that I was in, I was just, it was just super easy for me, you know? Um, and within those two years while I was in college, I was, before I even graduated, I was still getting jobs within the first three months. I was doing jobs as, you know, on a on contract for different IT type jobs, small jobs here and there, you know, to bring some money in so I could still send money to my parents. Um, and on one of those contracts, that job that I was doing within the first two, three months was where I met my now good friend, Tim. You know, that's the guy that I mentioned in the past video that opened my eye to what was happening to me, you know, you know, with my mind getting messed up by the left side and all that stuff. He was the one that showed me the light. So shout out to Tim, you know, a good guy. And, you know, we, you know, work pretty well on that first instances where we work together as contract on contract and once um a few months down the road or a year down the road when i got into i got the next big offer big brick to work for AutoZone head office in memphis tennessee and as a technical analyst one and um it was the best thing i took it and you know that's the best job i, I ever did up to this day i loved that job and while i was there i was like you know i tired of him i said hey you know I'll talk to my boss and say i know this guy man he's pretty good i worked with him on a you know as a on a contract before you should bring him in you know, he's smart, you know, works well with people. He's a catch, you know, and my, my, my supervisor took my recommendation. You know, I told him, hey, send the stuff over to them. And the rest is history. They took him in and he's still there to do it. Um, I, I worked that job for like two years and I had to leave it because I lived in Memphis at the time. I, I lived in Missouri at the time and it was like a four hour drive doing that and college because there was no break. Once I got done with college, I was still like, driving to other zone um for the job so it was hard you know i couldn't do it my, my vehicle was getting wore down so by this point when i had to resign from that job i felt confident that you know with my degree and the skills that i've sharpened over you know 15 plus year period i can run my own operation and that's what i did you know i resigned and you know went on to open my own business now called dre i tech and you know just been running it ever since you know so yeah, and he's still at AutoZone right now. So, you know, shout out again, Tim. Um, you know, he is one of the best guys to have, you know, one of the longest standing guys to have in that era, you know. And, yeah, he is the one that helped me out a lot, you know, in when I was in that rough spot. So after, you know, leaving AutoZone and, you know, coming back home to Missouri and that's, um, you know, operating with my wife because my wife was already running her new shop by that point, And I'm like, you know, you know, two is better than one. So we decided to like split the operation in half and, you know, half of the, the building we run as our nail shop. The front half and the back half is run as my business, Dre I Tech. And, you know, we've been working together ever since. You would think working and being around the other half um, for as long as we have been around each other, you'd get bored and tired. And, and but it's the opposite, man. We are each other's best friend. We, 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 we're inseparable. You know, some of the time when I'm not around her, it seemed like she'll have a panic attack. And, you know, for me, when I'm not a runner, I'm just like, I'm just like calm when I can see her because I feel like, okay, I'm there. I'm a, I'm a protector. You know, uh, you know, I just feel a lot mentally good when I can see her. I know that she's okay. But, you know, not to the level that she gets when I'm not a runner. But, you know, the love is strong, you know. And by the time, you know, I, I skipped a few things. I forgot, you know, one very important difference as well. Um, by the time it got to the end of the year in 2011, I welcomed our first child, my son, on um, November of 2011. My son was welcomed into the world on November 2011. So because it was important for us, coming from a family background, that we're not rushing anything. So that's why Eve, within the first three times she came to Jamaica, we never tried to have children or anything like that. A lot of guys would have, but I'm not one of those guys. And she had morals, I had morals as well. So it was important to me not to have you know, child, children or the wedlock and God forbid something happened and I'm stuck in Jamaica and my mother, my children is in America and we we'll just never see each other again. So that's one of the biggest reasons. Um, so yeah, I welcome my son in January, in, in November of um, that year, 2011. And then two years later in 2013, month, November again, I welcome my daughter into the world. So it was two years apart. So not only were we careful with the relationship and how we were progressing, progressing, it was the same thing when it came on to the kids. We didn't rush anything, and I stopped right there. I was happy with two children, a boy and a girl. That's like was my best dream, having two and not having to have to try again. So yeah, and um, 
you know, everything's been great since then, man. Like, you know, just thinking about it, how tough that was, you know, it, it's it, I use it as a story to a lot of people that have relationship struggle that, you know, let them understand that, yeah, you think you have it tough. Let me tell you a story. And, you know, how we got through it. And it was just pretty much down to just the emotional connection and love that we've developed and just grew and grew and get stronger over time. It was genuine, true love. It wasn't made up by anything because the way we met can only have been true love and all the other just, you know, God making it happen. The, that's the only way, you know, meeting the way we did. And so coming up this year in September, we'll be celebrating our 11th year wedding anniversary. That's crazy, 11. So we'll be almost 13 years together and we're very young. So, you know, even people that are older older than us don't have, you know, relationship that that's standing that long, I, let alone married that long. So we're not just like, as each year goes on, not only is, you know, our, you know, is it better, but we're like, we, the love is stronger. It doesn't get weaker, it gets stronger. You know, we're each other best friend, as I said before. And yes, yeah, so we'll be celebrating 11 year anniversary this year. So, you know, um, our parents have flipped, you know, round full circle. You know, our dad loves their, he's inseparable with his half Asian, half black grandkids. I call them Jamaican, you know, um, and myself, Jamaican, because um, I became a Jamaican in 2019, 2018. That's when uh, I became a citizen. Because even though I was here for already, um, Six years by that time, you know, I wasn't in any rush to become a citizen, mainly because um, I didn't know what it meant in terms of what I was giving up, you know, um, cultural wise, because Jamaica is like my, my home, my heart. And I'm like, what does it mean? You know, I didn't understand what it meant. You know, I thought it meant more than it did. So I was like hesitant in doing it. But once I found out, you know, what it meant, I was just, OK, all right, I'll do it. You know, because a lot of people, when they come up, um they usually you know go for the citizenship within the first two to three years or three to four years but i wasn't in any hurry you know because you know statistically a lot of relationship um and marriage feel within the first two to three years and a lot of people were thinking that ours was gonna feel the minute i got here you know parents back then used to tell that hey he's gonna leave you as soon as he gets up here just using you and they were happy to see that there was wrong not only did i not leave her i end up you know helping her taking care of them as well because at the, at that point she was pretty much the main provider or taking you know the one looking after her parents and now the person that there was against is now the one supporting it and helping as well so you know they were happily proven wrong and her brothers and stuff you know we started off with a little bit of you know issue but eventually you know at least one of the two brothers i was always good with even when i felt like not a part of the family and kept myself at distance. He always like, you know, showed me love, you know, shout out, um, tongue. Um, and the other brother, the, the, uh, the second oldest one, I always had a friction with, but eventually that friction became friendship. You know, we became friends later on in the years and we just grew to have respect for each other or, or love for each other. So our, our brothers and majority of family was always supportive. And the only friction I had and felt at the time at the beginning to you know to when i arrived was from her dad you know but he grew into it and changed pretty quickly once he saw his daughter was too strong-minded for him and yeah you know the rest is history you know so i'm here in america that's my coming to america as i call it i put it in the title so it's good my coming to america story um how i came to america and pretty much made sure i wasn't one of the st you know become one of the t statistic of being one of those guys that comes up and let the environment and the culture um, get into the head and let them feel like they're immune and or they're safe. And before you know it, the back home deported. You know, I was not going to be one of those guys. So I treated every day like it was my last day. And, the, and like this was going to be my only opportunity for success. And I'm here a success and a love story, you know, fully reformed, you know, in terms of the political side. And healthy mental you know because of my mind i've been cleared and you know just let you guys know if you're in a relationship you know situation like that you know you can't make it through you know take it from me and my story you know i left out a lot of the hard stuff but you know well a majority of the hard stuff because it would take too long but we, we had a rough time you know i had trust issues she never had trust issues but as a dude i always had it 
you know, because you can't see the person, you know, so it's hard to like give your heart and trust someone that is, you know, 3000 miles away if, you know, or so, you know, and expect them to like, not like forget about you or whatever, but you know, a true love shine through, you know, and when your relationship is started off not based on physical attraction, that's when you know that you're onto something real because you know the person never saw each other from the face off. So for them to build that over time without really seeing each other, it had to have been a true emotional connection. So it, it's a true love story. Met on Yoville on an app that they couldn't even see each other. It's not like they were on Facebook friends first. They met on Yoville, not seeing each other. And you know, back then we both had the reservation, you know, with a lot of catfishing was big back then as well. And so even a person that you saw on the Facebook profile might not be them. So that's why it was important for us to like gradually, you know, elevate in stages to make sure that, you know, once we got to see each other, we knew it was real. It was important to make sure each person was all what they said they were. So yeah, so that's my story. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed and leave a comment again down below if there's anything that you guys want me to talk about in the next video. I never planned to make it a series or make it more than the first one, like I said, but I always say, you know, if there's something you guys want me to talk about, let me know. I will try to make a video on it, you know, in between my, you know, my schedule, you know, but, um, yeah, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. You know, if this is the only video or the last video I'll, I'll be able to make, um, well, it's fine because I'm just happy with what I've seen so far. And the main thing is, you know, just being able to, to help someone. That's all I care about, you know. Just being able to touch someone or reach someone wherever they are and let them know that not, they're not alone. And just keep on fighting for your love, especially for your love, you know. Just don't listen to anybody outside of you, whatever they're telling you. Like, you know, go with your heart, you know. And, you know, it, it, it lead it to a vulnerable spot, but you'll become better from it, wherever it goes. So that's what I want to leave you guys. So from Mr. Wicked Shot to all of you out there, all my conservative friends and family, those that even though agree with us on the conservative side, we still love you and, you know, hope you wish you all the best. And, you know, from Mr. Wicked Shot to all of you, peace, one love. You have a good one. All right. Take care, guys.